I'm John Cooper and welcome to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic where we bring into the studio leading experts in the travel industry to find out the current trends and answer any questions you may have. Now if you want to get in touch with us that's really easy. You can search for us on Facebook or Twitter, just search Holiday and Cruise TV or visit our website at holidayandcruisetv.co.uk or you can always drop us a line in the old fashioned way. Our address is the Holiday and Cruise Clinic, Holiday and Cruise TV. Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Liverpool, L22 5NG. Now, today I'm joined in the studio by Steve Williams, who's Director of Sales for MSC Cruises in the UK and Ireland. Now, welcome to the studio, Steve. Thanks very much, uh, John. There are so many developments happening right now in the cruise world with so many new ships. What do you think the future is for cruising? I think it's going through a really interesting change at the moment, Cruise. Um, you know, we've seen lots of innovations on different cruise ships over the last 10 years, be it zip wires, rock climbing walls, etc. But I think we're about to go into a period over the next five, 10 years, looking at the designs from the different cruise lines that are coming out, where actually it's the, the physical hardware is starting to change. Um, so the actual ship design is getting quite interesting. Um, so, in particular, take MSC Seaside, which is one of our new ships, which is coming into market. Um, it's all about taking the, the kind of inside out, if you like. Um, I think historically, ships have been a lot about what's inside, and you're inside a cruise ship, um, which seems a bit of a shame when you're at sea and you're, you're at, you know, in the ocean. Um, and this ship is all about connecting with the ocean. So it's got big wraparound decks outside with dining outside, um, restaurants outside, down very low to the sea, um, and all about being close to the ocean. So I think you're starting to see quite a lot of different things like that with cruise ships. Um, and I think over the next five, ten years, you'll see more and more innovative designs with the actual hardware, the build of the ships. When you see these new ships, they do have such such activities going on around them too, yes. don't they? I mean, say, they are almost holiday destinations in themselves. If you yes. never got off the ship, you'd be having a great holiday. Absolutely. And I think, you know, again, more and more it is about the ships becoming destinations in their own right. That's not to say, I think guests still look at where does a ship go as the number one choice for why they choose to cruise somewhere. So I think destination is still important, but more and more the activities on board the ships um, and we're seeing guests staying on the ships longer, not necessarily getting off always in ports of call. Um, and another, another interesting evolution, I think, with the cruise lines right now is buying up private islands, for example. Lots of cruise lines are buying their own private islands, and then the private islands being an extension of the cruise ship. Um, again, you know, we've got Ocean K, we've got Sabanias in Abu Dhabi, um, where the ship will dock, off you go. You can enjoy all the experiences that you'd enjoy on the ship, be it the spa, the yacht club, various different bits and pieces, kids clubs, but on, on, on land. Um, so taking that shipboard experience onto our private destinations. That's, uh, th those private islands, though, they are really becoming a, a feature of oh. cruising, aren't they? Yeah. And I, th I think it's because it gives you um, a, a, a feeling of exclusivity. Absolutely, and, yes. Uh, and it makes the guests feel special as well. Yeah, I mean, Ocean K is a really good example of something that we're doing to, say, take that shipboard experience onto land. So, you know, when the ship docks, it won't be in at nine till five. It will be in for two days. So you can spend the evening, spend right through the night on shore. We're building a 2,000-seat amphitheatre. So you don't have to see the theatre show on the ship which you can if you want, of course. But if you want to stay on land, have that land experience, go to a rum bar in the Caribbean, um, experience scuba diving, snorkeling, etc. The spas, as I mentioned, kids clubs, just taking that experience onto shore and, and absolutely feeling exclusive. Now, there are quite a few new ships, as I say, coming along. Uh, you've got, uh, is it the Magravia coming up next? Meravilia, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So that will be our, our next new build, which is going to be absolutely state of the art. Um, another thing you're going to see, I think, around innovations that we, we, we were just talking about um, is smart ships. Um, so ships are getting far more te technological in their designs. So things like check-in procedures, things that are a bit, 
bit tiresome about cruising in the past, where you've turned up at a cruise terminal and it's a couple of hours before you actually get on board the ship. All of that will be taken care of before you get to the port. You're bored, it will all be smart technology. When you're on board, it will all be um, GPS signals. You'll know where your kid is at any time. You won't have room keys anymore. You'll just go along with your wristband. You'll go shopping with your wristband. So, so the, it, the, the industry is moving very fast right now, very fast. And technology is a big part of it, though, isn't Huge. it? Huge. As you were saying, I mean, say these days, I mean, when I go on to cruise ships now, it's you get the app. Yeah. You, you know, and the, and the app, yeah. you, you can book yep. dinners and theatre shows. You book dinners, things. you can see what shows are going on at any given time. So I think the days of seeing the traditional uh, kind of daily newspapers are almost a thing of the past. Um, and I know for some people, technology frightens them. But it's very simple, it's, it's all very user-friendly, very easy to use, but it's to really enhance the guest experience. One, to allow them to get the most out of the ship, to get the most out of the onboard offerings, um, keep them abreast of anything that's going on on the ship, and it will just really enhance their shipboard experience to give them a better overall holiday. Uh, well, some of you have been writing in with some questions. Uh, we've got we've got one here from David Sharp from Nottingham. He said, "When I was younger, cruise holidays were all seen to be for older people. How has that changed?" Oh, totally. I mean, it, it, you know, I think yes. Go back 10, 20 years. Um, what's the expression? It's for the overfed. <laughs> the newlywed and the nearly dead. <laughs> that was kind of how cruise ship, crew, cruising was, it was um, it explained. It's changed beyond belief. Um, I mean, you know, the company I work for, MSC, our average age is very young, and I think people will be surprised to hear it. You know, it's full of late 30s, early 40-somethings. It's for families. It's for young couples. You know, it, it's not unheard of now. You see kids that cruise with their parents now in their early 20s choosing to cruise for their own holiday. Um, because the onboard offering is just, there's something for everybody. You know, if you want entertainment at night, you want to party, you want to go out clubbing, it's there. Equally, that's not to say it's not for older people too. I think it's about finding what you want to do on board that's right for you. But the benefit of the large ships is there's something for everybody, John. When you get to these larger ships, uh, it's a question actually that's, that, that, that's, that's come up here for, uh, from, uh, this is Kevin Mulroy of Epping. He says, with so many cruise ships, large cruise ships being built, do you think they're getting less personal? Uh, personally, I don't think so. I mean, I love cruising large ships. I love the choice and the variety that they offer versus a smaller ship. Um, I think what it's about is finding the space that's right for you on board. So, again, the ship designs are very clever now. They tend to have lots of smaller little areas, small bars, small lounges, as well as your kind of big theatres and things. So it's finding the bar with the right ambience for you, be it you want it livelier, quieter, somewhere you want to sit and read a book and have a quiet hour. The big ships offer all of that choice. So if you want busy, lively, quiet, more relaxed, there's something that's right for you. Just finding your niche on that ship. I suppose then when you find where you like, you go back there time and time again, so therefore it becomes intimate. Yeah. You get to know the way to Exactly, and yeah, and I think that's it. You do, you tend to, I know when I go on a ship, I tend to find a couple of bars I like. There may be 20, 25 bars, but you tend to radiate to the bars that you, you, you get used to. You get to know your barman, they get to know you, what you drink. Um, and you tend to radiate to the same areas. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, well, just to hold, hold your horses there for us for a moment, Steve. Now, if you're always talking of cruising, as pricked your curiosity, well, you can always get our first time guide to cruising. It is completely free. And all you have to do is give us a call. It's 0333. 00 32 216. That's 00, uh, uh, sorry, 0 triple 3 00 32 216. Calls are charged at your standard national rates, or you can request a copy from our website. That's holiday and cruise tv.co.uk. Now, while you're doing that, we'll take a short break and we'll see you in a few moments' time.
Welcome back to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. I'm John Cooper and with me today talking all things new about cruise is Steve Williams, Director of Sales for the UK and Ireland for MSC Cruises. Now, MSC stands for the Mediterranean Shipping Company. Yeah. But I know MSC Cruises don't just do Mediterranean no. cruises. No, we're absolutely global, John. Um, and I'm really glad you brought that up. It's, um, we, we're really excited because we just had a massive announcement where we've launched our first ever world cruise. Um, which is going to be a 119-night voyage sailing from Genoa in Italy, um, or you can join in Barcelona. Um, but it's going to head off to some amazing destinations. So obviously across the Atlantic, out to the Caribbean, um, before it goes down to Central America, to places like Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Guatemala. Wow. Um, then through the Panama Canal. That's a, which that's is a, tick, tick box, isn't it? fabulous destination, uh, and then it sails up to California wow. before it heads off across the Pacific, doing places like Hawaii, Tahiti, French Polynesia, the Solomon Islands, before it gets down to New Zealand, where it will call on the beautiful Bay of Islands, which is oh. again another real tick box destination. Um, then she of course goes across to Australia, um, to Sydney, Melbourne, um, before she heads up to Asia, um, touching places like Singapore, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur. Then she embarks across the Indian Ocean, going to Sri Lanka, the Maldives, Dubai, Amman, Jordan, so fantastic for Petra, wow. to go and see the Rose City. Again, a real once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, and then she'll head back into the Med, into Greece, and then round to Genoa. Uh, where she'll finish up. But for our British guests, the, the great news is the next sailing is Genoa to Southampton. So if they want to bolt on and end up in Southampton, they can do. And of course, after you bought all those presents, you won't look at just going to be You're going to you have a bit of luggage. <laughs> yeah, a few souvenirs <laughs> along the way, definitely, definitely. Now, that is a real long, long journey, it isn't is. it? Uh, yes. You know, so some people can afford that sort of time yes. if you're retired or you want to take some time out uh, who is the normal sort of person who takes a cruise like that yeah i mean obviously 119 nights you know you're talking the best part of three four months so not everyone has that uh, that time um, at their disposal so i think you tend to find on a world cruise the older age is definitely higher because it's going to be more retirees you know people that have that time to spend um, but something you can do john which is great is segment it so people that don't have the time, you could, for example, do California to Australia wow. um, and pick up that section, or you could do the Genoa to California section. So people that, that want a longer voyage and something a bit special, but don't, don't have 190 nights, you can do a, a segmented section of that. Now, what gets me thinking about these sort of things is, first of all, all the places you're gonna need visas, because, you know, you know, the world's like that these days, yes. isn't it? Yeah, it is. And MSC have given a lot of thought to the World Cruise when we were deciding the deployment of the ship. And what we purposely did was leave off some of the big destinations where you'll need the big expensive visas. So places like China, India, for example. So we picked Sri Lanka over India because you won't need the visa. Because, you know, you add up four or five of those big visa tickets, you're talking best part of £1,000 not to mention the, the hassle and inconvenience of sending off your passport four or five times at a month at a time to get those big visas. So a lot of thought's gone into the itinerary and I hope we've come up with something that is a fantastic itinerary, but really, really good and suitable for our guests. It's very easy. It's very, very different, isn't it? But, I mean, that's the world cruise and that's, yes. that's the whole yeah. nine yards sort yeah. of thing. Uh, but there's other areas of, of, of the yes. world where I know you specialise in, in cruises. Yeah. And one of them, which, you know, I love is Cuba. Yeah. Now, until a couple of years ago back, you know, you just couldn't get to Cuba because of the, the you yeah. know, the, the American blockade and what yes. have you. And, and it was, just, well, you could get there, but it was awkward too. Yes. And, you know, you certainly couldn't cruise there because none of the American cruise yeah. lines could go anywhere near it. Yeah. Well, that's the benefit of being a European cruise line. <laughs> so we were granted permission before any of the other cruise lines. Um, so we've been down there a couple of years now. Um, it's been hugely popular, so much so we've put a second ship in. So we have two ships based in Cuba um, in the winter and one in the summer. It's been so popular with our UK and Irish guests. 
And the great benefit that MSC has um, over some of the American cruise lines, which I think are, are going to shortly be coming into Cuba, is we home port Havana. So rather than be in Miami and come down for a day where you're just going to get a, a real top line feel for it, we home port in Havana where you stay for three days. So you use the ship as a hotel. So you can get off and experience Havana over two, three days, really get the feel for the destination. Then off your sail around the Caribbean to the Bahamas and places. So you still get your cruise, your Caribbean cruise, but also with a, almost a city stay in Havana as well. So it's best of both worlds. It really is opening it up as well. It's, it's, it's a very, very different experience yeah. to, to anything yeah. you, you, you'd ever get. Yeah. Now, um, let's get back to some of the questions from, from some of our viewers here. Um, this is from Shannon Newman of Sterling in Scotland. She said, would you say it's best to sail from the UK or to fly out and join the cruise somewhere else? Well, if Shannon's living in Sterling, she's probably going to have to fly to either <laughs> Southampton or, or Barcelona, I guess, um, unless she has a very long drive down Southampton. So, um, look, I think it's personal preference. Th there are some fundamental differences. If you're going ex-UK, the proportion of the guests on board are going to be Brits or Irish. Um, and that has quite a different feel on board. Um, you know, it, it's very more UK-centric. Um, it's the benefits are you can take obviously unlimited luggage if you're driving down it's very easy you know you just check in your board you're off um, so that's the obviously obvious benefits you're going to deal with the Bay of Biscay which you know most of the time is fine but you're probably going to have a couple of sea days before you get to your first port of call the benefit of fly cruise is you hop on a plane you get off in Barcelona you're in the sunshine you cruise you're there so, but you've got the added added complexity or the added hassle, particularly if you've got children, maybe you don't want to do the flight with the buggies and what have you. Personally, I prefer a fly cruise because I like the mix of international guests you get if you go on a fly cruise. You tend to get more Italian, Spanish, French, Norwegians, Germans, and I like having that more international flavour to the cruises that I do versus a more British experience. But I think it comes down to personal preference of what, what somebody prefers and what's convenient and right for them. Right. Now then, uh, some of the other questions that we've got coming in. Uh, this is from uh, Anne Foley in County Kildare. She says, is it best to go all inclusive or pay as you go? So that's an interesting one. Um, I think it depends on the cruise line. I think it depends how much alcoholic <laughs> beverages you tend to drink. Um, I think uh, yeah, a lot's been talked about all-inclusive and a lot of cruise lines offer all-inclusive now, either be it in promotional activities, you get you know, free drinks of varying degrees. I think you always need to check the drinks package that's on offer. Some will be just beer and wine, others will be the full range of spirits, beer, wine, cocktails. So I think it's always worth getting into the detail on what does all-inclusive mean. Um, if if you do like a, a tipple on board, then yeah, it, all inclusive is a great option, definitely, because it doesn't actually take that many drinks to kind of cover the cost of that all inclusive package. Be it if you're getting it complimentary as a promotion, great, everyone everyone wins. But if you are buying an all inclusive package, you know, normally you're looking at four, five, six drinks a day. You're probably best to buy a drinks package because you know. John, on board, um, many of the cruise lines will charge you for speciality coffees, for bottled water. Um, so it isn't just the alcoholic drinks you need to think about, it's also the soft drinks, which that soon racks up. Yeah. Uh, cruises have changed dramatically over the past few years, haven't they? I mean, um, and I'm talking more about the affordability compared to a land based yes. holiday. Um, where do you see that going in the future? Um, I think it's a really interesting question. I think when a cruise line launches a new ship, you know, it's at a premium, which rightly so it should be. Um, if it's their newest, best um, state-of-the-art ship, there will always be a premium because some cruisers will always want to go on the new ship. It will book faster and it will book quicker, which means the rate tends to go higher. But what if you went to that cruise ship three, four, five years down the line, you're probably going to get a better deal on it because there'll be another new ship in market which then will be carrying the premium because that's a new ship in market. I think cruising is exceptional value for money. I think it, it's very affordable. There's lots of misconceptions that it is still expensive. It isn't versus a land-based holiday. 
for the activities you get included, be it the theatre shows, the entertainment, the kids' clubs. I think it will remain very good value for money, um, and I think it is a great value for money holiday. Um, I think it's one of those things that, you know, it is personal taste, isn't it? Steve, thanks very much indeed for being with us today. It's been a real pleasure. Now then, if this talk of cruising has pricked your curiosity, then you can always get our first time guide to cruising. Now, it's completely free of charge. Now, it's not, you know, war and peace, but it gives you all the information you need. And all you have to do is give us a call. It's 033 00 216. That's 033 00 216. Now, calls are charged at standard national rates. Or you can request a copy, as always, from our website. That's holidayandcruisetv.co.uk. We can always watch this programme time and time and time again till your heart's content. And also find out more information about the cruise shows here on Holiday and Cruise TV. Uh, that's all from me this time around, but stay tuned. There's more on the way from me and from Steve. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye now.